Can you go? I think I think some technical issues. Uh, all right. So, so Kanika again. She also hails from uh, Pune, and she's five X certified marketing cloud consultant working at uh, Atherius. And uh, you know, she also helped me in, in you know in hosting such events. Uh, so that's a short introduction about you know, uh, community group leaders. So with us, we are, you know, we have um, Panindra Arya Chetta with us, uh, who is 24X certified, um, you know, marketing cloud uh, expert. And, uh, you know, he will be giving us a brief walkthrough about, um, you know, how to integrate CDP with, with marketing cloud today. Uh, hope you all are set. And in between, if you have any questions, please engage us with, with help of chat window and uh, we'll we'll make sure that we'll answer or we'll address all your question and queries at the end segment of this uh, this event or session so if you are if you are ready panindra um, so take it away yeah <clears throat> thank you kanika thank you ajit and uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to talk on this pune marketers group and uh, very good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Anindra, and uh, I'm going to talk about today on uh, how to connect marketing cloud connection with the CDP. But I love to talk about a couple of other data points as well. Without any delay, I'm going to share my screen and probably you can record your session as well, Ajit. Yes, Anindra, already started. Okay, perfect. Let me know once you're able to see my screen. It's coming up. Yeah, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you once again, audience. And uh, looking, and it's really good evening uh, in Singapore. And myself, Anindra, and uh, I'm part of Epistoki Singapore uh, Consulting Company. It's a platinum consulting partner with Salesforce. And uh, I have my personal blog here. And I'm a technology head within Epistoki who handles uh, all the entire delivery and the customer experience. And today I would like to talk about uh, how we can set up marketing cloud connection with uh, CDP, which is nothing but a customer data platform. We are renaming recently, right? It's a marketing cloud customer data platform. And today's our agenda would be, uh, before I talk about uh, customer data platform, I talk about uh, any, any data sources that we would like to connect with CDP. I'd like to talk about the types of data I have got ample amount of questions in LinkedIn on different sorts of channels through Twitter. Uh, what kind of data which we can integrate with CDP and uh, what are all the real benefits of CDP? Is there any overview that you can give it us or how we can navigate CDP in Salesforce? What are all the, what are all the steps that we can, once we provision CDP, uh, what are all the steps that we can go ahead and then set it up inside Salesforce platform and uh, talk about CDP data flow and after that, we can talk about uh, how to set up the marketing cloud connection with CDP. It's quite easy. It's not take much time. And uh, the session is very, uh, I, I believe this session definitely help us for all the marketers uh, who are a part of the marketing channels, omni channel teams, or the people who are a part of marketing cloud, uh, administrators or the consultants or any other functional teams. It's really beneficial for uh, everyone to understand the benefits of CDP. And finally, we can talk about uh, any questions and answers. I can happy to help you out. And uh, is there any question that I could, couldn't could be able to answerable that I can go back and then I'll definitely answer your questions. So without any delay, let's talk about uh, and all these slides that I can take it from slide share. Uh, it's one of the person has shared, so I'll just capture those. And let's talk about the types of data. Let's go first thing first, like, you know, so we all in the, in the era of uh, 2022s and the 20th generation, we always talk about data, where we will get the data and uh, how easy that we can categorize the data and how to simulate that data, how to normalize that data and leverage for our omni-channel marketing platforms, right? So typically what kind of data that we see normally in our daily day-to-day -day life? What, what, how many types of data are available? So if I talk about my architects, if I talk about my subject matter experts, they always things that uh, there are first party data money, there are second party data, third party data, but eventually we all need to understand 
different kinds of a data when we work with data platforms, right? The first one is first party data, which is which is the data that we collect usually uh, from our own organizations, right? So the first party data, which is ideally our personal identifiable information, which is PI, such as our name, address, email, phone number, and, and so on, right? So the second party data, usually the second party data which is owned by the partner, but, but that can be shared with uh, our organizations, right? So we can get all this second party data because there are a lot of data companies who share the data with us. Because if you are a pharmaceutical organization or a pharma biopharmaceutical organization, you talk to different vendors for getting your recipes data, for getting your patients data, right? Because you manage your portals and you, that is your business, like IQV and all. Like they're all second party data, which you can get it from different different partners, right? So the third party data, which is ideally different parties, vendors, you will get it from online, we'll get it from different browsers. So it's a, it's, it's a completely anonymous data. It's like your personalization data, which is sitting on IS Interaction Studio, right? Which doesn't contain any PI information, but only through cookies and any device ID or manageable information, we will ideally get from third party data, right? So when we get these options of data, how, how comfortable we are how comfortable we are in order to take all the data from different sources, different third, different parties, and and combines on a, on a system generate combines a profile which can beneficial for our own business, right? So when you talk about why we use this customer data platform, right? So ideally, we understand the different kinds of a data. Then we'll understand what is customer data platform. What customer data platform will give us the benefits to bring all the data together to define a systematic profile, which is nothing but a customer 360 profile, right? So the marketing cloud customer data platform, which is a self-service customer data platform, of course, is self-service CDP platform that can be used to create your personalized audience segments to power your marketing, right? Why we need CDP? Because the end product is always that I use the audience to segmentize those audience to leverage my marketing, right? to increase my brand loyalty, to, to, to increase my awareness, the acquisition of my customer profile, to increase my brand loyalty, to sell my transactions, to get my loyalty scores and all the details, right? So within the module, you'll have a lot of significant amount of navigations and you can see how you provision your account and we can talk about uh, how how your, your our companies uh, support us to set it up this customer data platform inside Salesforce platform. So ideally that's how this CDP will help us to bring a self-service, self-centric kind of a system, which creates a personalized audience segmentations that powers a marketing to create a complete core concepts of data acquisition, data awareness. You can see the branding, you can see the loyalty improvements, you can have many sort of use cases that we can bring it out, right? So ideally how we see the CDP in Salesforce when 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 you procure a Salesforce CDP instance, so where do you see ideally? So you'll have an option where you can go to your Salesforce, right? So this is this is where you'll see when 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 Salesforce account executives procure a Salesforce CDP, you have an option, an app, which is provision, nothing but Salesforce CDP. So in Salesforce CDP, before that, you can go to your setup. So once it is set up, so you'll have an option to go to the CDP, you just enter CDP here. Then you'll see here under the configuration, we have many of the sources, B2C commerce, external activation platform, Google Cloud Storage, Ingestion API, and all these details you have. Because they're all the, some of the sources where you leverage to connect with many third party systems to bring the data into a customer data platform and you can personalize the segmentations and then build the omni-channel interface audiences, right? Under the CDP, you have an option to click on setup. So here is a way that automatically Salesforce designed our system so the marketers to marketers to enable the complete cross channel world. So once it is ready, so you'll have many of the options where you can plan for your Salesforce CDP instance, you'll create your own instance, populating your Salesforce CDP data model, and then your instance is located in so and so because 
as you are aware, this product also has been hosting on the AWS platform, right? And you have the tenant specific endpoints also because every 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 organization which is provisioned by CDP, they have their own tenant specific endpoint, right? The tenant is something that I'll talk about where your entire CDP will be hosting on, right? It's kind of a domain. Now, once your CDP has been provisioned, you can see all these options. You can see all these options at different kind of a data sources where you can see it. And uh, there is one more way where you want to set it up. When you click on setup, there's a CDP setup as well. So like this, you have a navigation where you can go and then set up your entire Salesforce CDP. So there are two ways, one with through setup and I click on CDP, you can see the setup option. There's one more option where you can click on settings and then just to click on CDP setup. Like this, the navigation of CDP will works inside the Salesforce platform. The same way which I've talked about it, in the next slide, we'll talk about uh, the screenshots, which how you can access your Salesforce CDP app from Salesforce platform. And I would love that every audience need to understand what are all the tabs available inside Salesforce CDP. Because if you look at my screens, there are different kind of tabs has been provisioned once the CDP instance has been up and running, right? Along with that, you do have some sort of permission sets needs to be enabled before you run the CDP. That, otherwise, it will throw an error and showcase those permission sets. So under your advanced user details, so you have an option, the permission sets where Salesforce CDP admin, data aware specialist, marketing specialist, marketing manager. I'll go through in the next slides what are all the benefits of all these permission sets, but minimum permission required to access all these tabs which is nothing but Salesforce CDP admin who manages all your admin operations, who manages to run your segmentations, who manages to run your entire Salesforce CDP platform, right? And now if I can go back a little bit, the app, the CDP app. So this is the home screen of Salesforce CDP where you can see home screen, data streams, data model, calculated insights, CIs we calling as data explorer segments under this you can see the segmentation the recent segments activation targets activations data lake objects profile explorer data action targets as well as data actions and an is nothing but identity resolutions so i would recommend each and every person to go through all these elements i've captured a slide which talks about what are all these day apps which can definitely gives a, a minimal idea about the CDP properties or kind of a CDP core modules. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation. So I'll go on a presentation mode. If you look at what are all these tabs, so the tab, the data streams that what I've talked about it, the both data streams and data model are the connected data sources, which you have to start ingesting data from the relevant data source. So the data streams are really a uh, powerful, uh, what I mean, it's like a, it's like a, a third party sources, nothing but assistance, which you can connect with CDP and to bring the data from the third party to CDP under data model. So you have to prepare your data model for any object, right? For any implementation, what do you do first? When you integrate any systems, ideally what I do is I'll go and then I'll, I'll integrate third party system before I integrate, I need an authentication or authorization to connect with the third party systems, which is done through ideally we can calling as an API, but here we're calling as a data streams, which we connected to the data sources to bring the data into customer data platform instance. So the next one is calculated insights, which is really a good topic. So these insights will give us a lot of, lot of significant amount of insights because when you integrate with commerce the commerce cloud b2c commerce cloud so what it does is when you create a new calculated insight automatically it gives us the predefined clv the customer lifetime value customer life score the loyalty of the customer so that all gives using calculated insights which include calculated metrics that helps the marketers to build the segments the other one is the main important one identity resolution you're getting data from B2C Commerce Cloud. However, the same data cutting it from different Magento, 
maybe you're getting data from different sources offline data online data or use your ingestion apis to connect with any third party sources data so all this data you're getting it but ideally if you don't have any identity resolutions nothing but the rules reconciliation rules has been designed you won't get the individual record our final target our goal is to design one individual record that can help us to connect with multiple downstream systems nothing but crm systems that nothing but to send this data to marketing cloud so that one single subscriber one single subscriber key that can help my marketer that feels happy because i use only one subscriber record only to send an email to send a push notification to send sms right and i can use it for ad, ad studio and all the details the next next one is a data explorer and a profile explorer is just a data viewing tool like a schema builder if i can talk about a broader tool and it'll just give you the complete sense of what are all the data has been ingested and what is the what are all the number of unified profiles has and what is the data model and all the structure so the final segments are really important because the segments will give a complete picture of your segmentations because there's plenty of data you build some formulas to segmentize the data because the data coming from different source of systems i really put some sort of segmentation because only the data coming from so and so industry just move that data into one segmentation and just to activate those segmentations to move that data into marketing cloud so this segmentation activation targets are really helpful in terms of marketing cloud to send the data back to marketing cloud because these are mainly mainly important because once you segmentize the data you need to send the segmentized data back to marketing cloud to send the data to marketing cloud you have to activate the marketing cloud account you have to define the who's activation target what is the end end system that you are sending the segmentized data always a marketer things that you segment in cdp you create a unified profile and i need to send the data back to marketing cloud using activations and activation targets that i can showcase how it can be done and the final one is just a as i said there's a setup icon where you can go to the admin and do all the behind the screen work so that's what we're calling is all these tabs data streams called data sources data model ci's calculated insights for getting a better value for the marketers to segmentize it ir identity resolution for unified profile data and profile explorer is just to view the data and the different kind of a unified profile of the customer segments to filter the data based on different industry different people and all the stuff use your complete formulas use couple of uh, dpos dmos and uh, the targets are where you finally set your indiv individual data so that's what the cdp does that's what how the platform is always looks like look at all this because i've just connected my only marketing cloud that's where you see all my data streams your segments your activations as well only few activations so that's what this entire cdp tabs will talk about it right so let's see if anyone has any questions so that uh, if not then i'll jump into Uh, Panin, as of now, there's no question, but but as I'm also learning the CDP, so I have one question from my end is that, ki, like, the data here it's moving from marketing cloud to the CDP, or the data is moving from CDP to the marketing cloud? Because I've seen in some of the implementations that the data is moving from CDP to the marketing cloud, but but uh, when I saw the Salesforce. Uh, sessions there there was a data was moving from marketing cloud to cdp so just wanted to understand the movement of data between both the platforms that's a good question uh, so ideally there are typical two use cases okay let's talk about uh, this is your sfmc okay so in your sfmc uh, you build uh, what do you build you build a uh, beautiful landing pages using your enhanced load pages concept right so you getting data from maybe a oracle cloud via ftp you getting data from maybe somebody in your team is dumping data manually right into marketing cloud this manual insertion insertion into a data extension uh, you can call it ad hoc data extensions okay so you are doing all these activities just imagine okay okay 
okay right. and on all these data is moving into sfmc yeah 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 okay. all this data moving into sfmc right so now uh, you have cdp platform your marketers the marketers always says that this is my only platform which before we was going to be is going to be my unified unification okay now let's imagine this manual insertion you insert the data into one data extension this data extension this also part of into one data extension right now here you have three subscribers with this with the different attributes okay let's imagine this subscriber you got first name last name first name last names and you got email id okay from here you got uh, you got this first name last name first name maybe you got a mobile number from here you got the data of you capturing the mobile number again or you capturing some device id okay you capturing uh, the industry yeah. so here there is a same subscriber but the data coming into three different states one with manual one with oracle cloud one with landing pages but ideally three subscribers you are investing your your cost which is a cost around like three dollars crc right let's imagine three subscribers yeah. because here your subscriber ps email id your subscriber ps somewhere around uh, you can't keep the mobile as subscriber key you can keep somewhere mm -hmm. some other identifier you can use a device id as your subscriber key now you invested three dollars for only one one single subscriber which is the same properties but ideally as a marketer i see these kind of a data a lot but I do have a CDP platform which is sitting on Salesforce to build my unification, to build my unified profile, which include my parties, which include my data, data, all the data kind of an assets. What I do is ideally this, I'll have an option in CDP. I have an option that what I'll do is I'll create one, uh, one, uh, I have an option actually I'll showcase in CDP that I can bring the data from marketing cloud to CDP. Okay. okay from here what i'll do is i'll go here i'll bring my data okay from cdp i'll just create one i'll create my data stream and i'll choose my data starter bundle which is total you want a total total marketing cloud just because this is my primary bu okay just imagine this is your primary bu altogether this is your primary bu under this you have a child bu child bu1 child bu2 okay now I connect it to my primary BU and the relevant child BUs as well. Okay. Now I use a data source. I created one data source. I choose my marketing cloud. I choose my starter bundle or I choose my particular data extension where it's creating a lot of mess. Okay. Once I create a data stream creation, once it is done automatically in the backend, automatically it will create a one data stream, which include all the relevant data because in my total primary BU, I have how many data extensions? Maybe I do have, maybe if I choose my primary BU, I have total 20 data extension, which include my child BUs as well. Okay, so all this 20 data extension, which contains all the records will flow into data stream. We create one data model for you automatically. Okay. Now I have a data stream. What I'll do is I'll go and then map the respective details with my cdp defined objects nothing but a uh, uh, a profile and unified unified profile object in cdp and then i'll do all my segmentations everything and after that once i do segmentation what i'll do is i'll just create one data extension which is unified data extension if you imagine from from here you got like three subscribers three subscribers now here i done all my segmentations I done my activations. I done my activations. I schedule my activations again. I've scheduled every one hour. Then my final product would be only one unified profile with the combination of first name, last name, mobile, email, and uh, I'll get my device ID, industry, everything. So one, one single record has been inserted. And here I'm going to design one subscriber key one subscriber key using my party ID. I'll design one formula field that the combination of either my industry versus mobile or email number versus phone or something. 
and then i'll make the party id as a subscriber key so that and i invested 3 usd here but at the end product i am investing 1 usd for this customer so i'm saving 2 usd for my entire organization at the same time i'm having a, a unified profile got uh, so that i leverage this for sending my entire product i use a journey builder to send email to send sms and push notification so it's very clear right so there are two ways you can bring the data from marketing cloud to cdb you can unify the data and then use the data for omni channel marketing one use case the other use case the people already sitting in somewhere uh, because all there are some data where if you look at this right so this b2c commerce cloud hmm? you got the transaction data abandoned card data right and there is one more platform called uh, you have you have sap data which is directly sitting in mule song you connect to your mule, mule platform you have an offline data offline data you use your ingestion apis to talk about to all these platforms now i'm going to connect with cdp so here i really don't know what 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 kind of data but what i'll do is here the heavy lifting i connect all the systems to my cdb what i do is i'll do all my segmentations activations and schedules schedules now all this data i'm going to make a unified profile for the respective customer that data i'm sending it to my shared data extensions you see right so it's a to and fro you can bring the data from marketing cloud build a unif unification you could get the data from different source of systems and then build a unification the final product only one thing you're going to build you're making the marketer's life is very easy to unify the data of the customers and then put them into a different data extension under cdb which i can showcase so all the data ideally it can be sit here once i done unification right all the data will go and then sit under marketing cloud i'll showcase it's just running now you can go to the data extensions under data extensions you have a concept of don't show this again the shared data extensions you see customer 360 segments this is where all my data will sit cdp sfmc because this is where i created activation target now under here you see my dendar name under this i have three fields only under this i can see all my unification records and and for that just for the knowledge that this data can come as a real time or we have to set up some ftp that it will be coming real time. once in, it will be a real time so and, and the is, mm -hmm. no, go ahead go ahead go ahead first one really please continue please. it's a good question actually so what happens is whenever you whenever you start uh, provisioning of marketing cloud so ideally how it does us uh, the first step what you have to do is you have to go to setup when you connect with marketing cloud i'll i'm telling you the step by step activities when you click on setup you have a concept of click on cdp first there is a marketing cloud click on marketing cloud so all these steps has been done after the cdp provision once you click on marketing cloud there is a concept of enter credentials when you click on manage so i'll have an option to go and then enter my marketing cloud credentials because you have to initiate the authentication to third party trusted service once you done that it automatically uh, because i already enabled the marketing cloud right so yeah i i got the correct that it can be then instantaneous yeah, on a real yeah. time also it can be in an ftp exactly so what it does is it'll create a credential first of all and then uh, you don't need to set up anything uh, kanika once you set up this marketing cloud right once you enter credentials you have an option to choose the business unit after that it'll ask you to choose a bundles or after that it'll ask you to choose the business units of um, parent business unit and the child business units once you once it displays a screen says the concept of uh, choose a business unit to activate once you activate it what will happen is automatically in marketing cloud in the back end it will create all the automations cdp automations it creates in the back end so every one hour based on the based on the data stream that what you design i'll showcase that 
Now, once the provision happens, so it will create all the automations. I'll showcase all these automations. So this is as, this automations is going to be happening in all the parent and child BUs because you selected parent and child BUs at the time of provision, right? So these automations will be created. These automations will be created across all these your, you can see your engagement data, your uh, all this data will be automatically, these automations will be created. And then this will be loading the data into Salesforce uh, CDP platform. Okay. So these automations runs every hour because what once I provision the marketing load like this, what I have done is I have done to create a data stream. Step number three, one, the step number one is, so what you have created is a step number one, provision CDP. Next thing is connect SFMC. Step number three, create a data streams. So these data streams, because in the step number one, once you provision, sources will be automatically provisioned. Once you connect SFMC, automatically automations will be creating inside Marketing Cloud to send the data, to retrieve the data from CDP to Marketing Cloud at the same time, Marketing Cloud to CDP. Okay. Now, once I create a data stream, if I go and then create one data stream, we'll ask Marketing Cloud. Now here is a starter bundle because my when I when I configure my marketing cloud Kanika, what will happen is I only have an email studio. I don't have a mobile and push applications in my system. I don't have a data either. You can choose all the email data, entire marketing cloud data extensions related to the email studio that what you connected, the parent BU and the child BUs will come. Or else you have an option to choose a target data extension from my main BU. I'll have an option to choose a data extension. This is what I'm talking about. From marketing cloud, you can bring the data into CDP and then you could build an unified profile and then send them back to the target data extension. Now I'm going to build up my auto confirmations or anything. Now you choose uh, uh, already is there. Now you choose the respective what kind of data is this? Is it engagement data? Is it profile data or it is another data? Ideally, it's an engagement data. You can choose the event time fields and you can choose a primary key. What is the primary key that what you would like to do? Once you've done this, ideally, once you click on maybe you can use email, but ideally don't use email uh, because the transaction use the transaction ID or anything. Now we, here is an option. Now what are you trying to do? You are doing a full refresh. Because full refresh is something that every time it will automatically refresh all the data from marketing cloud to CDP. Every time it will create a new data, it will create new data, sorry, it will create a new data streams. Nothing but always will delete the existing data stream and then create a new data stream. And here you can option to frequency run the schedule. You want to run every one hour or every 24 hours. You have an options every hourly or every 24 hours. Ideally, these kind of a data runs every one hour as a best practice. Once you deploy this, what will happen is in the backend, I'll close this in the backend, it will create one data stream like this because it will create because a lot of data streams ideally because in your marketing cloud, there are so many because this is my marketing cloud ID. I have auto confirmation, campaign data, contact point, email, the email snapshots, engagement bounce data, all the engagement data will come into the picture. Let's suppose if I take contact point email, I have a total 45 records coming from marketing cloud, coming from marketing cloud. And I'll have an option to see the respective feeds, what are all that data model. And you see the different details about the data stream. We'll talk about your, when is your created date? When is your last processor records? How many number of records? And your data stream definition details. If you want to uh, delete the data stream, you can delete the data stream and then you can create a new data stream again. And you see all the refresh history from day one, because I have told you that every one hour I've told to refresh. See, from every one hour it's done, from the day I've started, it's running every one hour and just capturing all the data because I don't see any new data, right? See, the only thing I can see is the 45 records is the first time. So every one hour, this data will be refreshed and use this data stream, use this data that what you got it from Marketing Cloud to segmentize. So now I create one segmentation to send this CDP to because all my data extension across my platform is 1725 population. Out of this, you can see all this republished history, how many number of records has been coming from Salesforce Marketing Cloud to CDP. And now I do have an option to define the rules because I don't like, uh, because if you want to define 
different kind of rules available. You can choose the data sources. You can drag and drop those data sources and then typically put some values. Industry, as I said, industry, healthcare and all. If you want to only send, unify the data, only the industry equal to maybe pharmaceutical or anything, you can define this rules and then you could, you could just save this. Once you've done this automatically, the data will refresh once again and it only pick from 1725, it only pick the industry as pharmaceutical. Out of 1725, you can see maximum of 100 records. And these records, these records will go to an activation. This is a main place where you can activate. Out of this, all these activation records will go and then flow into marketing cloud. So all these 41 records you could see under this marketing cloud under your shared data extensions. Right, because I designed some rules where only I design a rule where only with contact email not equal to blank because some of the records has contact email blank. So for those kind of records, I don't require really for marketing cloud purpose, right? So I can activate those. And while activation, it will ask you what kind of an account you want to activate and all the stuff. Right. So like this, you have to manage, you have to manage your entire platform for you know you can see here your activation summary your your integration that who which platform you would like to send the data to marketing cloud and what is your attributes included and because i only have an email that has been captured i can click on next now we can activate this so like this the data will flow from cdp to marketing cloud any questions uh, thank you, Panin, for my answer. But there are a lot of questions that are there in the chat window. I will be raising one by one. So Jagdish wanted to know that we don't have practice org, right? Scope of this course, did it require any underlying skills like SQL or SSJS like that we have in Marketing Cloud? Hey, good question, Jagdish. Uh, unfortunately, Jagdish, uh, don't have any practice org. Only the partners, uh, only the partners with Salesforce they have an access to the partner learning camp plc where you have a curriculum available called uh, uh, salesforce customer data platform once you provision that salesforce will give you automatic 30 days provision trial only 30 days which you can try it out and coming to your skill required skill set perspective you don't require any ssjs or anything you just require basic sequels that's it nothing much you just need to understand the process how you can activate and then how you can design your uh, different different source systems Chakadish, because for commerce cloud for uh, for offline data online data so you use some calculated insights to get more insights for other stuff uh, like uh, for other you can just leverage the segmentations more and you can build a lot of formulas you just use sql formula fields and all to get this done great great the next question is what basis cdp will unify the data if, if it is asked for me, I guess the answer is that we, we create a rules at the back end, the segments that you were showing us. Exactly. So if you take this, Chidanan, right? Like, you know, if I'll go back to my CDP, I'll go to my uh, segmentation, right? So I design one segmentation, especially, uh, especially, or, or let me go one, one, one data model. Let's go to the contact point email. Because this data model, I have just designed my data model, how, what kind of, because on the left hand side, my all CDP fields and the right hand side, I have my all marketing cloud fields. Okay. This is something that's mapping. I'll just take you through one cardinality relationships because it's one too many seconding relationships. Let me show you one simple stuff using. Uh... So let's take an example of I got the data from marketing cloud. However, I want to map this first. The first task is you have to map this data with the CDP local objects. Okay. So let's go to the mapping because I've done the mapping. CDP has their own local object stream. That's where it will create all this unification. Unification is done through CDP objects because this is your SFMC contact point email from your business unit. These are all the fields what you got it. The right hand side is a data model, data model entities, DMEs, which is designed using CDP. CDP has their own data model, which is defined each and every object, which is nothing but contact point email. Uh, you can define the, there are predefined objects available in CDP, which you can find in uh, Salesforce help and training modules, what kind of objects available in CDP. Here you have an option where you can just choose what is the right 
fields from marketing cloud to your unified object, the unified table. There are different unfield maps which have not leveraged. But for now, what I use for this marketing cloud, I just leverage only this. My subscriber key is my contact point email ID along with my party as well, right? Because party is where I can go and then do a lot of stuff. Party ID is the one which generates the uniqueness of your entire customer record. Once you've done this mapping, once you've done this mapping, the same stream available in segmentations where you can go and then build some formulas to identify how you can make the model because there are some records available from here to here because this is a primary key and this is your data sitting in uh, somewhere and uh, there are some other sources where your commerce cloud data coming into marketing cloud coming into cdp and you're ingesting that commerce cloud data into your own data model so you have two records one with sfmc other one is b2c commerce cloud and you have to map you have to match both the records and then run the rules those reconciliation rules you can find inside your segmentations all the reconciliations you could do inside your segments and you could do the reconciliation same in CIs as well, but it's a very specific use cases. You could talk about rules. So in rules, you could talk about different uh, formulas. You could build it. If you want engagement data, you could, you could put your city name. If you want, you can put your country. You can put country and you could define your conditions, conditional statements, and then you can just Put your aggregators as well if you want to count or if you want anything or you can put your attributes at what it's been talking about and uh, there are some other properties you can go to you can find out some more properties uh, not this you can find out some more validations inside your uh, 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 you can find that in the data explorer as well so like this you could just unify the data from multiple systems and then you have to prepare a final target extensions if you want more details, you can click on data like objects, which can talk about what are all the objects available uh, that, that you integrated. Currently, I have all this engagement data inside data available. But if you try to connect with Commerce Cloud, you'll see all the Commerce Cloud data like objects. If you want to see this, this one of this uh, send data from Marketing Cloud, it will give you the properties of each and every field, what kind of data type and all. And now here also you have an option to go and then map it. You can map from here as well to the local CDP objects. Right. Let's go to the next question. Uh, right, Panin. I guess Vas Vasan is also asking on the same lines that beginning question is how would you manage to identify the unique customer when the data is coming from different data source? So the Vasim, the answer is the same that we will be like linking, mapping the field with the objects of the CDP and then using the rules, we will be creating a golden record. So the next question is from Osama how, is that key? Oh, sorry, Penny, please continue. How the unsubscribe process works from SFMC to CDP? Time lag. Uh, so as I said, Osman, right? So when you when you activate the target, it'll ask you how much refresh interval you want to take. Uh, because every one hour is the right time as a best practice to uh, to get the data from marketing cloud to CDP. So the right answer would be every one hour. So there's no time time like as i said it's, it's it's at least a minimum one hour it's not a real time because every real time if you if you run real time what will happen the automations will not run like because it's a small data it's okay but for big data like a big customers ideally it won't work like this uh, that's where salesforce cdp works at least an hourly basis how fast is data synced from different data source to cdp uh it's a good question again. So there are different synchronizing options for each and every system. If you look at CRM system like Salesforce, Sales Cloud, Service Cloud to CDP, so it'll take a maximum you can refresh the data from hourly to every 24 hours. And the same kind of a concept works for B2C Commerce Cloud as well. The hour is a minimum time time frame that runs from different source system to CDP. Where will the recording of this session will be available? I think uh, Kanika. Kanika will answer this question or else she'll write it. I have a question on this unified profile. We can also use a contact builder. Then what is the use of connect SFMC to CDP? Uh, contact builder, uh, of course, it gives a lot of flexibility because in contact builder, uh, you can you can just choose the, uh, you can choose a primary key, foreign key kind of a relation. You can build a relations ideally uh, using contact builder and then you can prepare one final data information because that's the, that, that that can't unify the data, right, Shokumar? Because uh, contact builder will just 
unify your data model, not the records. In CDP, it will unify the records and bring you the customer 360 record. So that's the difference. See, let's take an example, one data extension, uh, as I told here, right? If you look at this concept, if you look at this concept, right? This manual insertion, first name, email ID, first name, mobile, or consider this, it has a maybe a party ID. Okay, let's example, this has a party ID, okay? And this also has a party ID. Okay, like customer ID, this also has a party ID. So ideally what you do using the contact builder, which is nothing but audience builder, you can have a, you can, you can build one. Uh, so I can take an example. It's already there here. So ideally what you do is you can go and then you can create one attribute group ideally, right? So you can create an attribute group. I'll choose any attribute groups. What I have, I can, So yeah, you can create an attribute group and then from this to this, you can have a map with the customer ID as a primary one, one, one to one or one to many relations. Using this, it'll create one data extension only. It won't get the data because it will only get the data until unless you build some automations in the back end to transfer the data, right? But it won't give you because it won't give you a uniqueness of uh, one subscriber key, right? So until unless you build automations and then you do a lot of effort build, putting some query activities and all then only you'll get the unique key but this cdp will give you a lot of uh, significant right it will give you the complete picture about like this if i talk about the unification you can see the cdp view how it look like it will give you the basic all the details about your affinity your age your status location when you open an email visited website browser and all the details so that's what the CDP will help you out for making making the marketer's life easier. Because the heavy lifting is done by CDP, they're doing all the heavy lifting because we're only leveraging their local objects to bring the right values. And then we're leveraging those for the marketers. Let's go. Uh, is there any sync limit like it can queue 10 syncs at a time or something like that? No, 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 there's no sync 10 syncs at a time as such, Anand. As I said, every one hour, you define your activation target because when you go and then design your activation target, right? So if you can go to the activations. So here I have an activations where my CDB and I activation target, my activation membership, as an individual profile because I want individual unique individual profile of course. So you design your activation and you can choose your emails and you can choose the respective thing and all your stuff where you define, right? Uh, when you create a data stream, so you'll have an option of uh, frequency of schedule. If you can go to your uh, segmentation so it'll give you an option of uh, publish schedule because every 24 hours I requested them to uh, refresh my data. But ideally I've defined 24 hours, but there is an option that we can get the data every one hour as well. Because at the time of data stream, I define to run every one hour, right? Because this data, this documentation, I requested them to run every, uh, every, every 24 hours because I'm dumping all the data from marketing cloud to CDP. But there are some ideal cases where you don't require the data to be dumped or a kind of a full refresh because full refresh is going to be happening every 24 hours. This has happened with full refresh. There are other things where I requested these kind of a data, I requested them to run every one hour. If you look at right 1043, 1143, my data stream runs at every one hour, but my entire data refresh of entire marketing cloud can be done in every 24 hours. Uh, I was new to Salesforce CDP. Would you recommend some learning path? Where do I start? I'm following CDP topics and trailblaze. Uh, I think we're saying uh, the only way that you can get some good insights would be trailhead, which gives a very less informative sessions. But ideally, if you are a partner with Salesforce, in partner ecosystem, uh, ideally I can showcase that. So in the partner ecosystem, you'll have an option to uh, learn many things because it has a curriculum. It has all the it has all this uh, high fancy things i can show this
in partner learning camp you have an option where you can go and then um, and then you have a lot of uh, every partner if your partner with salesforce requesting or recommending to reach out your company's account executive so that he'll give an access for you so here you have an option to touch with customer data platform so this is a customer data platform which i already completed but ideally it will give a lot of a uh, lot of lot of information so i'll showcase that showcase so we'll give you a step by step process on how we have complete because if you see this uh, setup and administration data ingestion and modeling so in the data ingestion and modeling you can see uh, different videos different kind of uh, how to cleansing your data ingestion refresh mode this is a refresh mode which talks about uh, every 24 hours every one hour based on the source system that what you design the cm model cloud information model cm data strategy and the marketing cloud starter bundle review if you look at this you see the word the one which you have designed right the one which i have explained so it will told the same thing first topic marketing cloud data with marketing cloud in relation so is that whatever journey i've explained so it object does the same thing the marketing but and so this, this is, is the best down. material where you can get an access uh, if your company is partner with salesforce i would recommend him to reach out to an account executive and then get this done and then learn cdp so within the same thing where they'll give you a 30 days provision trial where you can go and then play around the platform right so that's the way how difficult is the cdp credentials on the plc regarding sfmc consultant certification for example okay so ideally uh, as my perspective i am cdp certified recently uh, almost like a two months back so once you can once you uh, once you done your preparation it'll give a, a good glimpse on okay what is cdp what kind of help and all but i would recommending this is just a 20% will give you the course material but there is another thing where uh, there is another thing where you can go salesforce cdp You have to go and then uh, learn in uh, in Salesforce help and training module because that is where it will give a lot of values. If you feel like uh, let me Salesforce CDP implementation, so the CDP one zero one start with uh, So these are all the trial heads and then you have implementation overview guide where it'll give you a lot of details about each and every system so the b2c commerce cloud is really really uh, they've added a lot many value into the customer data platform implementation steps look at implementation steps like configuration ingestion identification segmentations and activations but there is i'll go through the helpful learning module Panel, I would request to drop in a chat window so that everyone can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me let me and, and just for the knowledge is that right now the CDP boot camps from the Salesforce sites are going on, so can register in that. Yes, uh, okay. yes, can register as well. I'm just finding where is this help article? Really surprising. This is a complete material given by Salesforce. Yeah, this is the one. Yes. I'll drop this. So here, uh, here is a place where I have learned uh, A to Z of A to Z of Salesforce. This is where you will get entire information, which include your uh, complete details about the CDP service resurrection. Yep, you can get start with uh, complete details about your help started data platform data platform basics. So seventy percent questions comes from all these units only. From partner learning camp, I see twenty percent, but rest all it's all eighty percent. So I can I can see some. 
I got a lot of questions, especially on this uh, unified source profiles, especially on the rule sets, uh, matching rule reconciliation rules. And they asked me a couple of on the activation targets as well. This one, create and activate targets, especially on the activation targets. So especially on the cloud file storage, what kind of files will be supporting in uh, CDP while you integrate with the AWS S3 platform? And uh, just go through a couple of other uh, segmentation modules as well. Especially on the canvas, what kind of relationships one to many, one to one on one relation between your customer data versus unified profile data, your primary keys versus foreign keys, calculated insights. You can see, right, up to 24 hours for suggested value to be visible after being enabled. So there's a concept of refresh that what we talked about it, right? So the refresh marketing cloud refresh mode. So here you'll see the respective refresh. What is a full refresh? What is uh what is absurd uh, and refresh history and error handling data stream scheduling sales for cdp will talk about b2c scheduling full refresh every day you can do full refresh for some of the data streams cloud storage ingestion api you can try access studio marketing cloud is here standard you can use daily engagement hourly daily hourly crm also the same thing you will done every uh you have Alternative ways you can do it and you can perform some incremental updates if you want within the next five minutes, but I won't recommend this because it will cost you a lot because everything is, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's uh, again costly for your, your, your enterprise account. When you provision CDP, CDP has a separate pricing altogether, CDP, Salesforce pricing. So the pricing is depend upon your reach, uh, each targets. If you look at corporate enterprise, enterprise plus, you look at right your unified profiles. You can maximum store and you can build maximum unified profiles with 45k, 500k, 500k super messages, segment uh, segmentation publishing, segmentation publishers, engagement events. So all this is a count of a limit. And again, once you do one segmentation and publish it, it'll cost you around one one dollar again. It'll all towards your dollars. Even if you activate segmentations, you do unified profiles, engagement events, and all the stuff. So this is what the costing of customer data platform in terms of pricing. Uh, and yeah, pretty much that's it. I would like to talk about more on a couple of details, especially on the DMB versus CDP versus CRM, but I think we covered much things in the first slide. Let me know if anyone has any questions. Uh, yeah, Paneen. We have one more question from Usama. Check on time. So are we okay that ex exceeding two, three minutes? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, let's do. Uh, if any questions are anyone, I think we can yeah, have yeah. to answer that. There, there's one question from Usama. Is that any limit on changing data source attributes relationship after integration is complete? Any set after integration we should be aware of? No, you can edit that uh, attributes relationships as well. So there's no cost around that. The cost is only the one which I've told you, right? That's the cost. This is what the costing. Changing rules, edit your data model, data view, so the data relationships, that doesn't cost around anything. Once you've done the changes, you have to run once again. You have to you have to activate once again and the whole, whole data has to be refreshed once again. You have to do a manual refresh. You can go to the data streams and then do a do a manual refresh. Okay, I, I guess I don't have any more questions. So I'm just wrapping up the session. Something, Panin, any topic that you wanted to cover? No, I think ideally we have completed. So we've gone to a different route, but of course we have done this. Yeah. We've completed that what uh, we would like to showcase to the uh, to showcase to the participants. I think pretty much that's how it, it's easy to connect. But hope you understand uh, the way which we've explained using different marketing cloud to CDP and from again from CDP to marketing cloud. Uh, how how essential to save your dollar read along with the dollar amounts uh, you can save the marketer's life as well because marketers see all this clumsy data right they'll they'll go wrong i mean they'll bump their minds and then they will do all reconciliations manually using excel or anything but using this you do a lot of stuff and then you can make marketer's life happy and then make the one single unified targeted extension that leverages for all the omni channel interfaces omni channels ideally So, so in just closing sentences, I just want to conclude by saying that thank you, Panel. 
addiction. As I recently started, I could understand this pain. Like we we don't believe that there is a PLC, and then that I guess a lot of people are around the same. So I would like to thank you and and everyone for joining the session and taking out the time on this and come coming up. Thank you everyone for. Yep. Thanks everyone for joining the session and uh, keep joining the Pune Marketers Group. So we'll come back with a lot of cross cloud integrations with Marketing Cloud. Uh, so look forward for speaking on many of this, like the, many of like this, and Pune Marketers Group. Thanks again, Kanika and uh, uh, Ajit. Looking forward for next session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.